To be mayor of Chicago means to be a leader for the city during the good times and the bad. Beyond their elected duties, they must be able to identify the source of Chicago's strengths, the diverse population which makes up this city, and the past and future problems that we may face. In this video series, we will look at each individual mayor of Chicago in an effort to not only better understand what it means to be mayor, but to trace the very history of our city through them. So who are the mayors of Chicago? William Butler Ogden was the first mayor of Chicago, born June 15, 1805 in Walton, New York. At the age of 15, he set out to New York City in the preparation for a career as an attorney. His Chicago connection came about through his brother-in-law, Charles Butler, who had invested in real estate here in Chicago. He needed someone on the ground and soon recruited Ogden to be his director in Chicago. Ogden arrived here in 1835 to what was a small town of just 1,500 residents. He arrived to a very miserable site as it just heavily rained in Chicago. He wrote about his experience. Wet and marshy and muddy from the recent heavy rains. Nothing could be more unattractive, not to say repulsive, in its surface appearance. Nevertheless, Ogden made good on selling the land that Butler had purchased here for a tidy profit. He became a full-fledged land developer, encouraging his eastern clients to improve the land that they had here in Chicago, as he knew that this small town at the mouth of the Chicago River had potential. In March 1837, Chicago was incorporated as a city and the first mayoral election took place. Between Ogden, running under the Democratic ticket, and John Harris Kinsey, the son of John Kinsey, an early settler in Chicago, who ran under the Whig Party ticket. In the end, Ogden was elected as the first mayor of Chicago with a confident 489 votes to 217. On the 3rd of May, he took the oath of office, which has changed very little since. I do hereby swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and I will fully discharge the duties of the office of the mayor for the city of Chicago according to the best of my abilities. The mayor and his council would serve a one-year term before another election, and it stayed this way up to 1863. Ogden only served a 10-month term to align with the original charter date of March 4. Although the short term wouldn't be his biggest challenge as mayor, that would be the Panic of 1837. He became mayor during the start of a financial crisis, which came about during the tightening of credit in England. It caused many American banks to fold. Construction projects such as the Illinois Michigan Canal stopped completely, and the price of the land that Ogden and many others had invested in dropped significantly. In the midst of these hard times, Ogden continued to establish the new city with his very limited resources. In fact, the city treasury reported only having $2,947 when we were first incorporated as city. Ogden appointed the first permanent board of health, organized the first census, and oversaw the election of the board of school inspector. While money was tight, Ogden organized a script to be used for the city's internal transactions, a system of IOUs to keep Chicago going. The city was full of them. They came in the form of one, two, or three dollar denominations, or they were valued for goods and services, such as a loaf of bread or a shave at the barber. The financial times continued to worsen during Ogden's term, and debt collectors were soon clashing with those who owed them money. People had bought up land in Chicago for a great deal of money, and now it was worth very little. Eventually, this all came to a head in a public meeting in Chicago, where a heated debate was formed over whether the debts would be rejected or paid. Ogden was able to quell the crowd, sympathizing that he himself had debts, and to dishonor these debts would mean to tarnish the honor of our infant city, reassuring the crowds that the bad times would pass and Chicago would eventually become the, the prosperous city he imagined. Ogden wasn't completely done with serving the community. In 1840, he served as alderman for the 6th Ward, and seven years later, alderman for the 9th. He continued to generously volunteer his time through public and private positions. Ogden resumed work in real estate and other business adventures around Chicago. He invested in our first brewery and the McCormick Harvester. Much of the industrial land on the north side of the Chicago River was developed under Ogden's Chicago Dock and Canal Trust, earning the name Ogden Slip. He continued to purchase and sell land around Chicago, encouraging his investors to improve the land, as once the depression passed, it would be much more profitable. He was an astute advocate for the railroad for Chicago, which seems like a logical idea today. But back then, people were impressed by the rickety wooden planked roads that they already had. Of course, mostly people were waiting for the completion of the Illinois-Michigan Canal, which would connect Chicago to the Mississippi River. This wasn't good enough for Ogden. He knew that the railway would be imperative for the success of rural Midwest farmers, and of course, Chicago. This reasoning was even more sound when he looked at the town of Galena, Illinois, a booming iron-producing town based right on the Mississippi River. The ore that was mined there was being shipped down the river to St. Louis, where they were making a tidy profit. A railway from Galena to Chicago would benefit us immensely, and that's exactly what Ogden set out to do. Tirelessly traveling the countryside, encouraging farmers and citizens to buy shares in the railway company. 
Eventually, the railway ran from Chicago to Elgin in 1850, Belvedere in 1852, and Freeport in 1853. Although the railroad never lived up to its name and did not end up making it to Galena, it set in motion many economic benefits enjoyed by Chicago and Northern Illinois. Through the 1850s and 60s, Ogden was president or director of more than 12 railroads. The Galena and Chicago line would become the basis of what is the Chicago and Northwestern line in 1859. Ogden was paramount to the expansion of the railway network, advocating for many small towns to become part of the rail. William Ogden died on August 3, 1877 in New York City. He accumulated a large financial wealth that was distributed between family and friends. Through his family, $600,000 was endowed to the University of Chicago to establish the Ogden Graduate School of Science. Ogden has been memorialized all over Chicago, with Ogden Avenue, Ogden Elementary School and Ogden Park on the south side. His contributions as mayor of Chicago were not as grand as his many successful business endeavors. Nonetheless, Ogden set a standard for Chicago and to the mayors that follow, which was beyond that of just being the first person to do something. Interestingly, another fact that I found out while researching this video was that Goose Island wasn't always an island. Ogden actually owned the land and he was excavating the clay there for brick making. He ended up forming a canal, which in turn created an island. It was originally called Ogden's Island, but it soon got its name after the geese that the Irish people were keeping there in their settlement. Or so the story goes.